Good evening. So, is gold a store of value? That is what I want to talk about. I've been thinking about it a lot because in the last I don't know, six months I've needed to liquidate some assets to fund projects and I it was an interesting one because you got cash in the bank which you could use for the projects and then you have an asset that's worth the same as the cash in the bank and the asset has appreciated in value and it's now become it's gone up in value and it's become worth the same amount of money as you have in the bank that you need so the question is do you use the cash in the bank or do you liquidate your asset and raise the cash that way I suppose in an ideal world if you have plenty of money and money was no object and you've got loads and loads of cash and one guy and you're not bothered you just pay for it with your cash you know you wouldn't have to liquidate your asset an asset could be a painting and it doesn't have to be gold it just happens to be gold and silver my situation and it got me thinking a lot I've been thinking a lot and gold is a store of value that is it. And it's taken me, you know, it's such an obvious thing. I don't know whether you're new to stacking or not. Anybody who's been stacking for years probably worked it out. But it, the penny drops when, when you're in a moment where you need cash, you need funds, and you look to your left and you think, I have the funds there as cash. I can use it right now and go bang. And then I look to the right and think, I've got the funds, but it's tied up in precious metals, gold and silver. It makes you realize that actually, cash has got an advantage in terms of the fact that you can just immediately, immediately use it. Now, you're gonna say, oh yeah, but you could just liquidate your gold and silver go to a coin dealer, sell it, sell it online, whatever. Um, you're right, yeah, of course I can, and that's reasonably quick, but it's just, it just sits there maintaining that value, and it could be going up, or it could be going down. And I know this is all obvious to a lot of you, but I think I found it frustrating that I wanted to realize the value the increased value of my asset quickly and I found it kind of frustrating that I couldn't do that with gold and silver as quickly as I thought I would be able to because you have to go through the process of liquidating it and selling it obviously and then for people like us who stack as a hobby it's got time consuming posting it going to coin dealers you know, whatever you're going to do, it's, it's a bit of a process. And you may not always get what you want. Um, but then you maybe, you know, you can't have it all. That's the upside of, you know, it's gone up in value. You're liquidating your asset to get, to realise cash. It's kind of ironic in some ways. but And then we hopefully get what we wanted. And everyone's happy. But... The longer it went on, I tried to hold off for a long time, constantly debating. I was almost leaving sleep on whether to use cash in the bank or liquidate my silver, as I've talked about in previous videos. I've already liquidated once 100 ounces plus of silver, and I, a few years ago, and it took me quite a while to get it back. And um, I think, you know, uh, I probably is a lot of sentimental and emotional attachment when you stack, especially some of the numismatic stuff that you like yourself. You, you, as I've alluded to in the last video where I said I'll never buy royal, I always want to say royal mail, tap, royal mint, uh, collector, tat, 
which is really brutal because there's a lot of people that are very fond of their purchases and they'd be quite upset somebody like me to call it tap but it really is just a marketing machine and I get it say you love I don't know Elton John and you buy the Elton John one ounce proof silver coin and you pay over a hundred quid for it happy days it sits on your mantelpiece and it brings you pleasure that's fine but don't expect that thing to be worth 300 pounds in a year's time or two years time three years time so or five years time in my case so I've been liquidating all this sentimental silver you know it realized I was releasing my store of value it was holding which enabled me to have cash which enabled me to use the cash for the project I wanted so really yeah, it did everything I wanted and I lost out on I had to sell a lot more than I thought because my numismatic um, investments were just trash and that was my own stupid fault my own you know made the classic mistake of thinking that your own taste in something will be reflected other people will appreciate that and want that as well it's a very naive thing to do there are certain things i think in life where it's just obviously clear that it's an amazing asset or you know the mona lisa you know it's it's a everyone knows that you know if you own a money you you are you've got something that's incredible there you know but these aren't <laughs> these are just these are just coins you know, that churned out from the Royal Mint. So, and I sit there, I did sit there, pondering day after day, I could raise one, so I've got this gold, I've got quite a lot of gold, I could just sell such a small amount and raise the funds that I need. It's holding that value, it's doing nothing for me at this moment, it's not giving me any dividend or any interest or any payout, it's just like holding, holding this, perceived value just like Bitcoin is they are very closely aligned in lots of ways in terms of they are just a a means to store value and that's good um, we need things like that you know um, the question is is uh, is it too much of a good thing to have a lot of money tied up in these metals they're not bringing me anything in i've been looking at government bonds stocks you know i should really be more diverse maybe you are more diverse well, i'm very risk averse in lots of ways i do believe in a bit of cash under the mattress and owning real assets like art gold silver classical cars you know, Rolexes, things like that. Um, I believe that those kind of classical investments, property, are the way to go. Property, potentially, is it the holy grail? Is it the holy grail investment? Because you have the store of value and you also have a yield from, if you have a buy to let, as we have in the UK, you have the monthly yield of the rent coming in. So not only have you got somebody paying off your asset and you could be making a profit every month, your asset is within reason as long as you haven't bought a complete, you know, piece of crap of a, of a, of a, of a property in a really bad location. That property should appreciate in value over time. So in 10 years time, you buy it for 100K in 2000, you have it for 20 years, it's worth 250k. And in all that time, you probably paid off anything you owned on it and it's been giving you an income. Now I'm trying to think of what's much what's better than that. And obviously there's some pitfalls of owning property, You've got to deal with tenants and all that sort of stuff, and maintenance, I get that. It's not perfect. There's, there is no perfect, there is no perfect investment, is what I'm realising. You've got to have a bit of everything. But going back to gold being a store of value, it is definitely, definitely 
such a store of value, it's off the scale. I mean, I don't need to tell you this. It's only when, when you realise how much you need cash and then you don't have the amount of cash you want but it's all tied up in an asset, it's like a wonderful thing. You walk around. I walk around in the town centre. You, walk, you must have done this to stack this. You stood there picking your children up from school in the playground. You're in a supermarket full of hundreds of people. How many of those people in there have got, if you stopped everyone and said, put your hand up if you own five ounces of gold and 100 ounces of silver? I bet you, well, in the UK, I can tell you now, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was anyone. You'd have to stop a lot of people before you found anyone, even a, a quarter of that, I reckon. And yeah, so you can have no money, no cash, but you can have a lot of money tied up in assets. It means you're like kind of cash poor, asset rich. It means you're not you're not having lots of cash about. It means that you are not susceptible to things like it being eroded in your bank account through inflation. So you haven't got to worry about managing it. It's very hard to spend on a whim gold and silver if you put all your money in that. It does, it's a very good way of saving in lots of ways. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Just some thoughts I need to get off my chest really because I'm not going to go on too much longer. And I wonder what you guys think about it. You sit there, you look at, you, you might sit there and think, I've got a thousand pounds of bank. But I've got £30,000 worth of gold here. You know? Who's but Is that good or bad? So I should be saying that's good. That's good. Um, but <laughs> there is a point where you need money to live. It's what I think, I think I'm realising that you've got to be careful. So, I, you know, overextending, is it not? Is it, is it, is it something we all do? Probably, you know, overindulge in certain things. It's just finding that balance between not leaving yourself exposed in a situation where you may rapidly need cash and it's tied up in an asset that if should you need to liquidate, you might be rinsed on, a, you know, you might not get the, the deal you want. You might be, you might get way under spot for your precious metals. You have to take that into account. That's quite a painful wake-up call. The kind of people know that you need the cash. You walk in somewhere with 20 ounces of gold and say, oh, you know, what are you going to give me? Um, you know, you're at kind of, if you need the money, you're kind of at these people's mercy. Um, you're not really in a position to go, give me, give me spots, give me, no, just say no. I'll go off, take it somewhere else. We don't. I'll give you that. We don't like it. That's what a few people said to me. To be fair, yeah. I went in there, all guns blazing. You're going to give me it? No, that's what I can give you. I will give you three hundred and forty pounds for a quarter ounce of them. Quarter ounce of a quarter ounce Britannia, and I was like, well. I need 440 pounds to buy now on bullion by post. And I appreciate that they've made a premium on it because they're a dealer, but the spot price is this, and you're offering me this. And we're like, well, you know, but we've got, you know, you've got to realize your asset value that you're holding gold and silver might be worth X on paper based on the full retail price that these items are going for now. And it might be worth X based on the spot price, but when you come to sell it, you may be shocked to realize you will not get anywhere near what you thought you would get. I think you will be prepared to take maybe a maybe a 10% haircut on that, even 15 on some. But we won't even go into what haircut you're gonna take on shitty numismatic silver. Anyway, that is it now. I'm going. I'll leave any comments or questions on YouTube. And uh, I hope you have a great day. And bye for now.